Hello, welcome back. Um, the poem that I'm going to read for you, uh, again, is uh, a gentle fable. Uh, our hero is a St. Bernard, so it's for all you dog lovers out there. The title is Sir Stephen's Promenade. Sir Stephen, the stoutest St. Bernard, was out for a walk after tea. Now, St. Bernard's are usually largish, but this Stephen was as big as a tree. As he walked in the park with his master, he would amble wherever he chose, with a gait that had never gone faster than a tortoise would go as it slows. Yet Steve suddenly sat on his haunches, and up to the air raised his nose. There was a slow settling of paunches, and just the tiniest movement of toes. Then from deep down somewhere inside him, this most curious of wailings arose, and it shook every limb on the oak by the gym, and awoke deaf old Pete from his doze. Then Sir Stephen stood up like a bloodhound, and solemnly started to trace. With his snout to the ground, this doughty great hound suddenly stepped up the pace. His master, though the path was uneven, clung on to the lead for dear life, for would rather have hung from Sir Stephen than have had to explain to the wife. Not once in ten years had Steve hurried, yet now was beginning to trot. Our Paul just behind was quite worried. He wasn't quite sure who'd got what. From a trot, Steve broke into a canter. Paul thought of his mates at the pub. He could already hear all their banter. Right in it, his nose they would rub. But Paul's plight became slightly more dire. Sir Stephen was moving at speed, and great mass at velocities higher can do serious damage indeed. Hampers and picnics went flying. As Paul struggled to hold his huge dog, he fell and now dragged along lying over rocks, hill, mud, stream and bog. He then passed where no sane man rambles, going down by the side of the lake, through an entree of duck's eggs and brambles, just scratching about in Steve's wake. Then once that Sir Stephen had vaulted the seven-strand barbed wire fence, Poor Paul had dessert, unexalted, in a nettle patch, ever so dense. Sir Stephen had slowed, and while panting, was almost in reach of his goal, quite immune to pained Paul's distant ranting. Confidently forward, he stole. The terrain was still somewhat hilly, but easing to one final crest. Beyond it, and waiting, was Millie the dog that to Stephen smelt best. For Sir Stephen had fallen completely, after years as a bachelor proud, didn't care that he wasn't dressed neatly, nor yet that he'd drawn quite a crowd. Well, great loves may seldom run smoothly, harder thumping the heart in his chest, and although he'd arrived there quite rudely, with stately grace o'er hill did he breast. Then the shock, when all got to appraise her, though a beauty in her finest half hour, yes, heavens be praised, yet eyebrows are raised when a St. Bernard so loves a Chihuahua. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye now.